Right, so it's a bit of a shifting metal story time when it comes to this Jaguar XKR. You may remember this from a previous video. You can't buy a car overpriced, polish some profit into it and sell it for more than it's worth. You can't, you have to buy it at the right price. Sold for 6,500, 1,100 pounds under what I was willing to pay for it. You can't have it for that money because I'm gonna try and sell it for 12 grand. We'll also have to fix it up a little bit. We've had it in stock for a little while. It is one of those cars and we recently sold it. We've taken a deposit on it. We've gone ahead and we've gone to get a few extra bits done that the chap wanted done. And it was due to go out yesterday. I was away yesterday. I was up at another auction trying to buy cars. Jason had texted me to say that the chap had been in to collect the car or what he was expecting to be collecting the car and then wanted even more money off. And basically it got a little bit heated and a bit touchy between the two of them. Jason had tried to say, well, you can't have your deposit back because the only problem is that you now want more money off at a later date. They were getting funny about terms and conditions. And in the end, and I don't blame Jason at all. He gave him the deposit back and said, leave it there. And then got a bit of a lecture from this chap's friend on how the business should operate. Just as a quick reminder, so it's a 2008, it's on about 87,000 miles, the 4.2 V8, supercharged, sounds absolutely amazing. Drives absolutely amazing, it's really fun. I really love this car, it's got a really nice cream leather interior. Everything about it is great, really. It's one of those cars that is a bit of a risky car, and that's why I think, you know, we got it quite cheap at auction. You probably would have seen all of that in the previous video, and if you haven't seen that video, then I highly recommend going and watching it because, that video is the reason why this car became unsold. Basically, Jason had finished all the prep on this car that Chap had asked for, getting the wheels fully refurbished. We'd had brakes, MOT, servicing, all new plugs through it and everything, all of which I will go through all the prices for you and explain why having more money off just wasn't going to be an option. He phoned the chap up and said, the car's all ready to collect now if you'd like to see it. He said, uh, okay, I'll, I'll come in and have a look at it again, which seemed a bit odd as if you'd already committed to buy the car, but saying you come in and view it again, maybe it was just a strange wording. But basically the guy came in, checked it over, looked around it, was happy with it. And he said, right, well, what are we going to do about price then? Because I know how much you paid for this. Either the chap had seen the previous YouTube video and felt like the fact that we had sold it to him for £11,800 was unfair. It sounds like a, a lot of money, doesn't it? A difference between 6500 which we kind of said in the YouTube video, plus fees, of course, and then 11800 And it obviously hurt his ego quite a lot. And he felt like he didn't want to sort of hand over that much profit to a car dealer, I guess. For context, the chap was a pilot, apparently. And maybe he just has a dim view of car dealers and, you know, we, we don't deserve to earn a crust. I honestly don't know. But the point is, well, this is the first time this has happened. Plenty of times I have sold a car and people have subsequently seen the video where I talked about it. And I was completely open and transparent about how much it cost me and how much we spent on fixing it up. And they've always said, I love the video. I watch it all the time now because it's my car and I really like it. None of them have ever said. I don't like how much money you made from this. We are a business at the end of the day, and if you weren't making money, we wouldn't have been able to be here to sell the car in the first place. Right, I've got my list here of everything, as far as I can remember, that we have spent on this car. And the, probably the full amount that we've spent on it probably surprised you. And I wish I was here yesterday so I could kind of explain this to the buyer and why there is just absolutely no hope in hell that we would have given any more discount off of this car just because he felt like he was getting a hard deal. In fact, I do wonder if this was just a case of like buyer's remorse, realised maybe he didn't have as much money as he thought to spend on a modern classic car and was looking for any excuse to get out of it because actually this is probably one of our least kind of profitable cars that we've sold in quite a while. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. So the car itself, we bid £6,500 at auction and when you buy at auction, you get fees. We had £397 worth of fees on that. You may remember from the last video that the head unit didn't work. There was no display. You couldn't adjust the central heating or you couldn't see the results of what central heating was, all that sort of stuff, because it just didn't work. And we had to get a replacement sat-nav unit or something, I think, in the boot. Whatever it was, it was about 450 quid and we had to wait for it to come from America, which is probably why we've had it in stock for about three months. A lot of this stuff took a while to come. On top of that, we've now had all four wheels completely refurbished at the cost of 384 pounds. We put some boot struts on it for 20 pounds because the boot wouldn't stay up. We've done a new MOT on it, which cost us 55 pounds. 
and as a result of that it had a few failures including the power steering hose which I don't even know exactly how much it was but I don't know exactly how much sake all right we had to put a power Adrian can you hold off for five minutes? We had to put a power steering hose in it, which I don't actually really know how much it was, and I'm honestly not interested in finding out. I'm just gonna say 50 quid. I don't think it's gonna affect our values too much. Um, I did do a little bit of research because we put new brakes, uh, disc and pads all the way around, and some new brake hoses as well, because they were MOT failures. That was around about, just in parts, 400 pounds, plus the VAT. We had to put a battery on it, because it would keep going flat. That was 160 pounds. And then we did a full comprehensive service on this, including eight spark plugs at £8.50 each. The pollen filter was about 35 quid, and all those other bits and pieces together was £180. Then we valeted it. It wasn't the cleanest car in the world, but it's now looking much nicer. I'm just going to say just for chemicals, polish, things like that, let's just say 20 quid. Labour for doing all these bits and pieces. So we got dis and pads all the way around, the servicing, the cleaning, uh, the running it to and from MOT, the collecting it from auction, 250 quid. As I say, it's been in stock and advertised for three months, which, as I've said in loads of videos before, if you're advertising on Auto Trader, that's about £100 per car per month. In fact, we would have had it on a couple of places, so it's probably even more than this, but let's just say £300. The biggest expense when it comes to this car was the VAT. We haven't seen one of my videos before where I explain VAT on used cars. We use the VAT margin scheme. And basically, in short, because it's a used item and there is no VAT to be charged on it, dealers pay VAT on the margin that they make. So it's the difference between £6,897 that I paid for the car, including the fees, and what I sell it for, which in this case, it was £11,800. So it's just did the math and it was about £5,000 I think which means that the VAT we paid at a rate of 16.67% I think that's right don't don't kill me if I'm wrong is 850 quid and it doesn't take into account all the expenses that we paid on it. that is completely irrelevant it's just what you buy it for and what you sell it for so 850 quid so that brings the grand total of our expenses on this car not including VAT to £10,016 which means selling this at £11,800 means we had a net margin of £1,784. Now, that means that's the money we've taken out of this. It doesn't take into account corporation tax when it comes to making a profit at the end of the year on this limited company. And it doesn't include the income tax that I would have to pay should I want to take that out and actually spend it on myself. You'd probably be down to... I don't know, a thousand pounds out of that. And would you warrant this car for up to six months to be fit for purpose? A, how many years old are we talking? 16 year old supercharged sports car made by Jaguar for a thousand pounds. I don't think there's anyone in their right mind. I mean, if I was given those figures at the time of purchasing this car, then I most definitely wouldn't have done it. Um, so I don't understand really well, I do understand. The chap has seen the video where I said I bought it for 6500 and it's upset him. He felt like he was getting hard done by. But actually, can you imagine all that work and effort we've put in to take essentially a £1,000 away at the end of this? I think you should be bending over and shaking my hand and kissing my ass, essentially. That comes across really doesn't it? I think he should be thanking us, really, because I don't think you'll find another car now as good for the same amount of money. Really, we should put the price up. And in fact, we have put it back up at 11995 And I think a buyer will be along soon enough. The car is now prepped completely and ready to go. Fresh new pictures, fresh new alloy wheels. Just lost the sale because of a damaged ego. So as irritating as it is that we had got this car fully prepped for a customer and he's now backed out because he felt like he was getting a hard deal, it's very much for the best because it's not the type of customer you want. I think that type of customer is going to be a headache regardless. Perhaps they were stretching a little too far to buy this car. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not just trying to put them down because you know, I'm just trying to find genuine reasons why this would be the case. But credit where credit's due. A lot of you in the comments before have said, I can't believe you let your prices out for how much you spend on cars. It's going to come back to bite you one day. 
and it never has up to this point and most people have been really completely fine with it it has on this occasion but as i say i think it's worked out for the best and yeah now everyone will know there's about a thousand pounds in this car for me which is not a lot at all i think you'll agree let me know your thoughts either way you can drop them in the comments below you can let me know whether we were asking too much money whether saying that we bought this at auction for six thousand five hundred and not explaining the cost because we didn't know them at the time was a bad idea i don't know i think it's worked out for the best in the end and we've got a better car for sale now and we haven't got a customer who's got unrealistic expectations which is worth its weight in gold. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed my little mini rant about this situation. If you have, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Not only will it really help us out, but I'm giving away a £4,000 Tudor watch. You could potentially win it completely for free as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers. That is it for this time. I will see you in the next video. Bye.